Vitalet is dead, or so the media would have us believe. You may have seen in recent media reporting all of the hype around interest rate rises, mortgage payments going up, and that meaning the end of the buy to let landlords. But is that really true? Well, my name is Dan Eaton, and I am the lead trainer here at Progressive Property for commercial conversions. And I just want to give you a little bit of a, a sense check into some of the things that are going on in the media and what we can do about them as landlords, as property investors, as property developers. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is the interest rate rises. The Bank of England interest rate is rising. Where is it going to stop? Some people think it might be 6%, some people think it might be 7%. Some people are harping back to the olden days and saying it's gonna be back at 15%. But the reality is nobody really knows. But what most people can agree on is that it has got a little bit more movement up. So we are expecting it to go up a little bit more. Now, what does that mean for the average buy-to-let investor? Chances are the average buy-to-let investor may have two or three properties on some sort of fixed-term mortgage product that may or may not be coming to an end. But when it does come to an end, chances are it's going to go on to a variable rate, which will mean that the lender is going to charge you a percentage above the Bank of England base rate. Now, for most people, this means that their mortgage payments are going to increase. Now, this is where all the media hype comes in, saying people are gonna to have to sell up, they're gonna to have to get rid of their properties, they can't afford them anymore, they're gonna to have to pay to prop up their property portfolios. But the reality is, that may not be the case, okay? And there are a couple of things that we can do about it to mitigate some of these interest rate rises. The first thing, and always the first thing to do in these sorts of scenarios, is not to panic. The media are out there to make us panic because it means we read and consume more of that news. That's fine, okay? If we know that, we can act a little bit more sensibly. So the first thing is not to panic. The second thing is we need to get some accurate figures to figure out if this is a problem at all for us or not. If it is just an old storm in a teacup and a bit of media hype. Look at the current mortgage products that you are on. When do they expire? When they do expire, what is it that is going to happen? Generally in those mortgage clauses, it will tell you what their standard variable rate will look like. Therefore, you can work out roughly how your interest rate is gonna be compared to what you are now, and therefore what the monetary impact of that will be. Now, if you can't work this out and you're not really sure how to do this, there is help at hand, okay? There are lots and lots of mortgage brokers out there who will be able to help you with that. And here at Progressive, we have our own approved list of mortgage brokers, so give one of them a call and I'm sure they'll be able to look at your situation and help you out. Now, a couple of other things that you can do, perhaps if you're still in a fixed rate to try and mitigate some of these things that may happen at the end of your fixed rate period. The first one is you can start to maybe overpay your mortgage a little bit. Now, you may have heard the phrase, look after the pennies and the pounds will look after themselves. Well, this is exactly what we're talking about here. Every pound that you pay back on your mortgage over and above your agreed mortgage mortgage payment is going to reduce your total mortgage balance and it's going to reduce it quite significantly in some cases. So if you can afford 10, 25, 100 pounds a month to pay off extra on your mortgage, it's a great way to do it and it's a great time to get into doing that. The second thing you can look at doing is maybe reducing the term of your mortgage. Could you make your mortgage smaller? The shorter the mortgage, the less interest you will be paying and that may make the difference between a product for your buy to let working and a product not working. So have a look at those options too. The other thing you can do is look at when your fixed term ends and look at whether or not you can fix it for longer with your current provider now, whether you've got to wait till the end of your fixed term or what those fixed term offers that they may offer you look like. And again, this is not about panicking. This is about getting some data to try and figure out how the prices look for you, how your mortgage payments are going to look and whether or not you have a problem or not. One of the things that has happened over the last probably two years is the rental market has been extremely buoyant. Now there's a number of factors that are leading up to this, but the biggest one, the biggest factor in all of this is we have a national housing shortage. We have 
a supply problem. And when we have a supply problem, the price of that thing is going to go up because there is more demand. Now this is of course area specific and area dependent, but generally you may find that if you've had a tenant in your property for the last couple of years and you haven't been increasing your rent in line with the market, chances are you may have a bit of movement in your rental prices. So you've got to make sure that your rental prices are always in line with the market. Now you might think this is a bit harsh on your tenants to be constantly putting up the rent. And in some ways you're absolutely right. But the problem of course comes so let's say you have a tenant in your property and they've been there for five years and you've never ever increased the rent. Well now your mortgage rate is increasing which means you need to find some extra funds. Answer me this, is it better that you have increased your rental prices with that tenant every year for five years, maybe by 10, 15, 25 pound a month, whatever it might be, or you turn up now five years later and say, excuse me, you need to pay 200 pounds a month more. It's gonna be easier to do the smaller regular increases than it is to do great big whacking huge ones. Now, no one wants of course to kick their tenants out if they've been a fantastic tenant for five years, but ultimately, if you've got the choice of either losing your buy to let property or kicking a tenant out, you might have to make some different difficult choices if they're not going to pay their market rent. Now there are of course lots of people out there who will pay market rent. So maybe that is an option for you too. Maybe that tenant will be better looking at living in a slightly cheaper property. Now of course if you've not even entered the buy to let market yet, if you're sat there thinking I want to get involved in buy to let, I want to get involved in property, but I don't want to have to deal with all these problems, I also have a solution for you too. Now in some ways this solution is for those starting in property, but also maybe if you are a seasoned landlord and you are having problems that we've just talked about, perhaps the way for you to solve all of these problems is by scale. Now what do I mean by that? Well, as I mentioned at the start of this video, I do commercial conversions. I take unwanted, unloved, and unused commercial properties and I convert them into much needed residential accommodation. As I mentioned, we have a national housing shortage. Give me a yes in the comments if you've ever seen a bank close down in your area, or an office block, or a cafe, or a restaurant. All those buildings can be converted. We can help solve our national housing shortage by repurposing the buildings we have already got. Now the beauty of this strategy is that you take one commercial building, you send in your professional refurbishment team so you're not doing the work, and then you convert that property into maybe five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 rental properties. Now that's 30 rental properties in one deal. Now that's gonna be fantastic for your portfolio building because you're gonna do 30, 20, 15, five, whatever it is at one time. But then what you're also doing is you are adding a lot of value to these properties. So when you come to remortgage them, you've got scale on your side. So you can do one project, put it on one buy to let mortgage and although the interest rates are rising and all the rest of it, your rental income is likely to vastly outweigh the cost of that mortgage. So you're gonna be making a lot more money because you're gonna have a lot more properties. Now, of course, this also mitigates things like rental arrears or void periods. Because if you've got one buy to let and you have one tenant not paying your rent, you're still paying that mortgage. But if you have a block of 30 and one's not paying, the other 29 tenants are still paying the mortgage for you. So if any of that sounds appealing, make sure you click in the link below in the description to download a report on getting started in commercial conversions. Now, when I say report, what I really mean is a comprehensive e-guide that will take you through step-by-step -step how you get started in this strategy. Now, my bonus tip for everyone out there is this. Keep it simple. Now, what do I mean by that? There are lots and lots of buildings out there that can be converted under permitted development into residential properties, but we need to keep it simple. So we are looking for shops that have closed down, banks that have closed down, offices that are not in use. Those three types of property are absolutely fantastic opportunities to be converted into residential properties. Now, let me know in the comments if you have any tips, how have you solved some of these problems? If you wanna know anything, any questions, put those in the comments and I'll respond as soon as I can with the answers and I look forward to seeing you on a Progressive Property YouTube video soon.